Welcome back to the Chad AC Show on News Talk 95.1 FM and 790 AM. KFYO, thank you for tuning in today. 770-5790-1800-687-0790. You can send in your thoughts, as always, on the text line, 806-680-2790. And yes, you can follow me on Twitter at Chad Hasty Radio. We go to the phones. Joining us this morning, Republican strategist Matt Mikoviak. Matt, good morning. How are you today? Doing great, Chad. Good morning. Hey, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, let's let's talk about the, the the Texans who are running for president. Uh, you've got one who's sort of on the uh, on the on the way up, though he's only polling still at about one to two percent. And then you've got Beto O'Rourke, who it, I think everyone at this point agrees. He's done, don't you think? I mean, it is I mean, Beto O'Rourke after his first debate performance, it just seems like he's got nothing left. Yeah, it's very hard to see a path for Beto. Um, you know, it just doesn't appear that he's going to be able to recapture the magic that he had in the 2018 uh, U.S. Senate race. You know, it, it's just it's hard for him to break out because he doesn't really have anything to offer that's unique and, and special in the Democratic primary. You know, for initially he was thought the thought was, well, he's a fresh face, and maybe that's exciting to to Democrats. Uh, but I think quickly they realized there just there really isn't any there there. Um, right. And you know, look, if he has a great debate, could he get some momentum back? I mean, I guess that's possible. I just think the problem for Beto is he's nobody's first choice. You right. know, he's he's at best somebody's third or fourth or fifth choice, and so then your whole campaign is basically premised on other people, you know, failing rather than you know, you winning their support, and that's a really tough place to be. You know, Julian Castro, who I thought actually had a very good debate, uh, I didn't agree with anything that he said, but he actually he, he presented himself well, and I think he reminded uh, folks back to the 2016 race and, and when Julian was kind of mentioned as a, a possible VP contender. Um, I think he upped his, you know, presence to VP contender status in the last debate, and it looks like he's getting closer and closer to making the third debate, correct? Yeah, he's, so he, at this point, he just announced yesterday he's hit the 130,000 donor threshold, which is one of the two thresholds you need to be in the September-October debates. Uh, the other is you have to be at 2% in four polls and in, uh, you know, right before the, the debate uh, occurs. Uh, and so obviously we, we're not at that point yet where those, the, the, that polling has been conducted. But as you said, he's been in that 1% to 2% range, so he's going to be right right on the edge. Uh, I imagine as long as he does reasonably well in the next debate in July, at the end of July, that he'll, he'll uh, qualify. I think the Democratic Party wants him on the debate stage. They want as much diversity as possible. Um, I think there's a recognition that he certainly could be a VP candidate. Uh, either way, he's going to be a high-profile surrogate uh, for whoever the nominee is. But yeah, he's on the edge, um, and so he's got to have a, a good next debate. Got to keep, you know, keep raising money, but really more than anything, he needs to earn media. So he ought to be doing as much, you know, television interviews as possible. Yeah, visiting with Matt Makoviak this morning. Matt, I, I, I had uh, Scott Braddock on yesterday, and I asked him, and, and I'll ask you the same question, uh, which is the the future for Beto O'Rourke, and because it, it, it seems like everyone's asking the question. Is, is he going to drop out and run for Senate? You know, and I think even Senator Cornyn is prepared uh, for that if it were to happen. Braddock said probably not, that, that he actually leans more towards if anyone's going to do it, it may be Julian uh, who does it. I still think Julian stays in it just because he wants that VP uh, nod, and if he loses a Texas Senate race, that that's probably much uh, – that's probably going to go out the window. Do you think either of these guys runs against John Cornyn this year? I don't. Um, it's certainly possible. I think they'd really have to flame out, you know, pretty badly. I mean, I think I think the odds are that Beto and Julian both are going to be in the fall debates. Are going to be in the, 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 the September October debates. And so, you know, once you're in those debates, you, should, you know, you probably think, well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of all in here. I'm going to take this to the very end. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, I just wrote a column for the Austin American Statesman about. Make an argument that I don't. I don't believe Beto can beat Cornyn. It's a very different race, yeah. um, you know. And I went through all the reasons why I think that's the case. Um, keep in mind, what matters is the filing deadline in Texas, which uh, I don't have the dates in front of me, but it's usually like mid-November to mid-December. 
Um, and so that's going to be when the decision will need to be made. Of course, that will be before Iowa, which is, I think, uh, like something like February 3rd or something like that. So if they want to compete in this first contest, they're going to, they're going to foreclose the opportunity to run for the United States Senate. I do think there will be pressure on whoever, whichever of them is, is, you know, performing the weakest, uh, you know, in November and December to drop out and run for Senate. Of course, by that point, the Senate candidates, uh, the Democratic side are going to be, you know, really working hard, raising money. And there's three or four people now running. Um, so no, I don't think I, I don't think either one of them is likely to run because I think they're both likely to be kind of hanging on, giving themselves a chance, hoping something can happen. But we'll see as it gets closer to November. Yeah, visiting with Matt McCoviak this morning here on the Chad AC Show. Uh, Matt, uh, what uh, what big statewide headlines have you been looking at today? You know, it just occurs to me, uh, uh, Chad. I'll make one other quick point, and that is, this is one of the things I make, one of the points I make in the column, and I think it's actually appropriate for both Beto and Julian, and that is the way they're running for president as full-scale progressives uh, puts them in a very difficult position to run for a statewide office in Texas in yes. 2020. The positions they're taking, I think, would make it really, really hard uh, to defeat Cornyn. Uh, statewide headlines: Obviously, the Obamacare uh, uh, lawsuit is in front of the Fifth Circuit with opening arguments today. The Attorney General's office is leading that effort. Um, we're not going to obviously get a ruling today, but we'll get a ruling in, in weeks or months. And uh, obviously that'll then get uh, uh, appealed to the uh, to the U.S. Uh, Supreme Court. But obviously that's huge ramifications for the country, for the state of Texas. So I think that's one, obviously one, you know, one really big uh, story to watch. I think the other is on the border. Um, you know, wh- what's happening at these detention facilities, you've had some Democratic members of Congress playing a leading role. Um, I saw one alleged to cover up today. Uh, so there's some kind of over-the-top rhetoric, but clearly there's a problem down there, and in some cases the level of care is not where it needs to be, but there's new money that's been funded by Congress, so hopefully things will improve quickly. Matt, I've got uh, Republican Party uh, Chairman of the uh, Texas Republican Party, uh, uh, James Dickey, on the show uh, tomorrow. Mm-hmm. He's going to be out here in Lubbock. Uh, were you surprised, or would you be surprised? Uh, you know, Alan West, he announced that he's taking a look at running uh, for state chair, or, or, or would you be surprised by that if he actually jumped fully into it? Well, uh, I guess exploring allows him to raise money for it, but maybe doesn't fully commit him. I, you know, I, I mean, I, I kind of look at it and say, you know, what is he trying to achieve? Um, you know, he he has been in the state only a few years. Uh, I don't believe I've ever seen him at a state Republican executive committee meeting. They're held four times a year. I uh, don't believe he's been involved really with the party. Uh, most of the speaking he does, does you know, he gets paid to do paid speeches, and he certainly fires up the base. Um, and he was a you know conservative firebrand fighting Obama up in Congress when he represented that Florida district. I just you know his his announcement speech really didn't talk much about the state party. I don't think he understands how it functions. I don't think he understands the platform. I don't think he understands what the party is doing now to try to register a million Republicans over the next year. Um, so, look, if he's got a better plan and a better vision than, than anyone else running for chairman, I think every Republican should listen. But I, I haven't heard that. And I think he kind of sees this as a platform uh, for him rather than a mission uh, with, a, with, you know, with specific goals in mind. And I just to me, I don't like that. I don't like that. It's a divisive uh, effort uh, heading into a really crucial election cycle in Texas. Yeah. It's not a, the kind of internal battle we need right now. Um, so I, I don't really understand it, but we'll, I guess, hear more from him over, over the next few weeks or a few months. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Matt, tell folks uh, how they can sign up for your newsletter and what your podcast is on. Yeah, absolutely. The newsletter is called Must Read Texas. Uh, we take all the top news from around the state and deliver it to over 3,000 Texans every weekday morning. You can sign up for a free one-week trial at mustreadtexas.com. The podcast is called Mac on Politics. Uh, it's available on the iTunes Store, on Google Play, on Stitcher, and on Spotify. You can also listen on the web on the web if you like at MacOnPoliticsPodcast.com. I think the last episode is the same one I mentioned last week, but we had George Will, which was a great honor to interview him and, and talk to him about his new book. You can uh, check out that conversation. All right, Matt, as always, appreciate it, and uh, have a good rest of your week. You too. Take care. That's Matt McCoviak, Chad HD Show, KFY.